Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. I'm Pat Ryan. Pat is one of my oldest friends. We've known each other for 39 years. He's in town visiting, so I thought, well, why don't we do this video together? And Pat is a huge Beatles fan, as I am. Today, we're going to count down the top 10 Beatles riffs ranked. Unlike the Zeppelin and the ACDC one, where I talked about whether the riff is iconic, meaning from a big song, and whether it's fun to play, those are the two things that I use to judge them. We're going to add a different criteria here because the Beatles have so many songs that are great, that have great riffs or great parts and are fun to play, but what are we going to do? Well, like, like a level of sophistication. Whether the song is really breaking new ground with what it does, because the Beatles did that. A lot of surprises. A lot, a lot of, of surprises, surprises in these. Good times, good times. Coming in at number 10 is a song off the Revolver record, which happens to be my favorite Beatles record. This was kind of the first psychedelic record. And this particular one has one of the trickiest riffs to play because it's actually a two-part harmony. Check it out. Coming in at number nine is a song off the White Album. This one is actually trickier to play than it looks. I went back, I thought I knew how to play it right, and I, of course I played it all wrong. I'm probably still playing it, it's slightly wrong, but it's, it's kind of awkward. It's a finger-picking song. Here it is. Song number eight is based on a drawing by Julian Lennon. John wrote this after seeing this. And it's a real example of a psychedelic song. It's probably one of their most psychedelic songs. And it has a very unusual chord pattern. Here it is. Song number seven is one of the most beautiful Beatles songs. It's got a great, great lyric, and the opening riff is just perfect. Song number six is one of my favorite riffs to play. As a matter of fact, when I did my Mixolydian video, I used this as an example and then had the video demonetized just by playing the riff. So this is probably going to happen with this one too. Check it out. Number five, this tune is really one of the most sophisticated Beatles tunes, especially the harmony parts. It's off Abbey Road, and I think you know what it is. Song number four is probably the song that you would think would be the first thing when you're thinking of Beatles riffs. This particular tune was actually a double A side that was released in 1965 with the other A side. The other single was We Can Work It Out. Here it is.
Coming in at number three, this tune is definitely done on electric because this is one of the best uses of distortion by the Beatles. We decided to play it with a capo because it just didn't have the power playing the way it's actually played. And it actually sounds kind of cool with a capo. Check it out. Song number two at the beginning features one of the earliest uses of feedback. But the riff, to me, was the beginning of the psychedelic Beatles movement. And this one came out in 1964. Check it out. <laughs> Coming in at number one for what we think is the greatest Beatles riff ever. It's actually written by George Harrison and it's off Abbey Road. So that's our list. Let us know what you think. Leave in the comments. Pat, what do you think? Enjoyed it? Thanks everybody for watching. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also the Beato book if you want to learn about music theory. That's how you do it. And check out my Beato Ear Training course at BeatoEarTraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>